Welcome to Thriller Bitcoin. Welcome to Thriller Bitcoin. exciting show today uh we're gonna start doing more of these because i feel for the most part filler bitcoin is just becoming kind of the go-to place where we just interview local bitcoiners here in austin texas at this point and um we're just doing more of that today we have on the show one of my favorite local austin bitcoiners g what's How's up it going? Man? how's it going thank you for having me man i appreciate it how you doing today I'm doing pretty good. I've been getting over this uh, this flu that I had. It fucking sucks, dude. Yeah, man. It's uh, you know, end of the year, cold, wet, rainy. It's it's going around. It always happens, you know. Dude, I was like, it was fucking Saturday, and I was just like, I got home, I started shivering. I was like, this this is not normal. And I was like, is this the fucking fever? Like, and then it was. So I, I like immediately made some caldo, right? Oh yeah, fixes everything. Right, and then uh, got that, and I was like, okay, I'm good, I'm good. And I went to sleep, woke up the next day, felt better, and then like towards the mid afternoon, the fever came back, and I was like, what the fuck? So I like immediately took a shot at tequila. Mm, okay. Yeah, and then I was like, and I was like, you know, let me just go to the bar. And I, uh, I pounded more shots of tequila and then numbed it. That sometimes works. <laughs> it made it worse. Oh, man. Uh, and then I had to record with Marty the next day. And it was just like, oh, man, I was totally like, I wasn't hung over anything. It was just like the fever had like turned into the flu. Yeah, but you got through it and you, here you are. Well, oh. no, thanks to like our mutual friend, Alex. Like we had, uh, he got me the IV thing. Yeah, okay. Shout out, Alex. Shout out, Alex. Good guy right there. Yeah, I love that, man. Oh, yeah. Well, good. I'm glad to see you're back on your feet. Well, let me tell you the rest of the story, dude. Okay, okay. So, so, sure enough, dude, the IV thing is a whole experience. Have you ever got one of those? Never. No? Never, sir. Dude, you uh, you get hooked up to this IV thing. They, like, pump you full of vitamins. He got me the zinc booster. Like, immediately when I walked out, my insides felt like like uh, they were, like, cryo-freezed or something. Woo. And then, uh, like, I felt good. But on the outside, I felt like shit. It was weird. It was so weird. Um, I walked out, bro. Felt amazing. But on the outside, I felt like shit. Then the next day, I was walking around normal, but I was all congested. And I oh. called my brother. He's a doctor. Sure enough, boom. Like, he gave me, like, all the, the stuff to get. I went to Walgreens. Fucking Walgreens has that shit behind the counter, bro. Like, they don't even have that shit in, on the fucking floor. You can buy it. It's all, like, fucking secretive and shit. Hmm, that's a little weird. I mean, shouldn't it just be out there for the public just to grab? Why, why you got to go to the counter exactly, to ask for it? bro. Hmm. If I wouldn't have asked my brother, like, what's the concoction to get rid of this shit? There's no telling. I would have been walking around. He said, like, if he said the people, the reason people are dying. I don't know, dude. Like, take this as a grain of salt, ladies and gentlemen. He said, like, the reason people are dying is because they, like, they don't, they walk around with this uh, congestion in their nasal whatever crap and they don't get checked out and then they let it go to their lungs and that's how they die yeah they say it all starts in the sinus man even before all this craziness was going on um i mean i've dealt with that all my whole life you know drainage nasal cavity all that stuff 
So yeah, definitely know what you're talking about when you say that. Uh, not a good feeling. Yeah. So like right before the podcast, I, I was in the restroom right now and all that shit was coming out of my nose. Oh man. It was like fucking, uh, to- was it Total Recall? <laughs> where he pulls that out of his, was it Total Recall where he pulls that out of his nose? Is it, I think, like, well, Arnold, right? Yeah, Arnold, I yeah. want to say it is. Is it Total Recall where he pulls that red thing out of his nose? Oh yeah, the big ball. Oh, the glo- <laughs> the tracker. Ooh. <laughs> the tracker. Great movie. Great yeah. reference. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, I forgot who I was talking to. I mean, it might have been Alex. I, for, I was like, dude, I feel like the, the spooks invaded ABC event and like they uh, they all infected us with uh, fucking the flu or something. There's no red coming out of your nose though, right? No, no. Okay, dude, okay. No, good, no good. Had to check. Just asking. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm back to normal. I've been back to normal since yesterday. But um, yeah, it was, it was a weird four days. Well, you're looking good, man. You, Thank you. you. I would have never guessed you were out and about. You were out. For like four days like that, five days. Yeah, so. dude, it's like the longest. That was like the longest uh, days off I've had. Yeah, I would say uh, I hope you enjoyed them. You know, you need some time oh, off, but no, yeah, bro. I know. I was watching uh, fucking Jason Statham movies. Ooh, the yeah. Transporter? No, I actually saw this movie. I don't know what it was. Like he was like avenging some kind of like uh, younger sister Thing, and then there's another one where he's like fighting Jet Li or something like that. That was cool. Jason Statham, I've, I've sat down and watched a little marathon of his, you know, all transporters and then the indie movies he puts out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, I, I was I was enjoying it. But after the second day of Jason Statham movies, I was like, <laughs> I'm fucking done, dude. Like, someone kill me, man. Like, this is just not. It was like falling in and out of consciousness, like you know, through the fever. And then I was like, you know, this is fucking this is not. I want to want to be on this earth anymore. <laughs> like, get me back to work, man. So, what'd you do? Did you just uh, switch up the movie genres, or no, dude? I was just watching those because I had like a it's like an eight pack, Ooh. those little Walmart eight packs that you get. Ooh. It's like fucking all his movies, like twenty bucks, dude. I'm a, yeah. I'm a fan of him, bro. He reminds me of a uh, fucking um, what's that dude's name? Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis, okay, big do, name do right kinda, there. Do you kind of see that or no? I could see it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He reminds you, like, his movies are very similar to, like, Bruce Willis. I think like, he has a little bit more karate, though, you know? Yeah, yeah, for Just sure. Bruce Willis is better, obviously, but, like, he's a he's a British version of him. He has the greatest Christmas movie in history, man. Who? Bruce Willis. Which one? Die, oh, yeah. Die, die Hard 2? Yeah, yeah. Is it Die Hard 2 or 1? One? 1. Actually, 1 and 2. 1 and 2? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think 1 and 2, yeah. Yeah, greatest Christmas movie ever. Yeah. I was watching that with Key on Christmas. It's a good movie. <laughs> As you should, as y'all should. <laughs> as we should. All right. Um, so, dude, tell me, tell me how you, cause like, fuck, bro. I met you back in when, like, uh, uh, was it during, um, it was like F1 weekend. I, um, I'd be was it F1? I didn't go to F1 though. Well, did you go to F1? That was when we did the meetup with the Bull Bitcoin team down here in Austin. Oh, dude, is that when I met you? That was the night I, I met I, you, yeah. How the hell did we start talking, bro? Uh, we met through Alex. My oh, buddy Alex, shit, and, really? Yeah, and then we kicked it off, man. And yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the Bitcoin right. Talks. We were both talking about South Texas, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh shit, because you rarely meet somebody up here from South Texas. Mm-hmm. Texas boys. Yeah, bro. That's when I was like, okay, this dude's this dude knows what's up. Then then we got into you know the movies, music, all the culture we grew up with, and then yeah, 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 the beach, South yeah, yeah all yeah. that. Yeah, that was like really easy because yeah, it's very rare. You meet somebody up here from South Texas. And I was like, oh, shit, this dude knows what's up then. Yeah. Yeah, it was like it was like finding a brother. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, it's everybody out here now, man. They're all from uh, New York and L.A. pretty much. Everybody I'm meeting. So, like, when I meet a local, a Texas local, a Texan, it's kind of like, oh. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit of a shock. But uh, yeah. it's, it's, always, it's always awesome. It's always cool. From then on, you know, it's like we're brothers. I mean, we are brothers, basically. Yeah. Dude, it was weird. Like when I came up here from um I started living in East Austin, they were calling me Corpitos. Did you ever get that? Like, did you ever get those kind of like nicknames? Like when you moved to like I well, I tell everybody call me G, but I've gotten weird ones like Gobby. Okay. My, I've had that. Uh Gabs. Yeah, yeah. Um uh, like those type of things. Yeah, yeah. Gabriella. I've been called Gabriella. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, close. <laughs> But just just say G, the letter yeah, G. Yeah, G's better. Yeah, so it works out. Uh, what what'd you say they called you here? Like that was back in the hood. They they would they would call me that when I first came over. I would I would be like, oh, man, that's a lot of uh, 
it's a lot of uh yeah i didn't like it because it was like it had a heavy hand i think so yeah i uh i had a buddy in high school his name was carlos and we always called him little carlito because he was real tiny yeah. so it was like carlito's way yeah yeah, yeah so yeah but it was it was, was kind of yeah it's crazy i was gonna say uh what did uh what did you get started with bitcoin how did you how did you what was your kind of journey down the rabbit hole my bitcoin story oh man it's yeah, my, everybody has a fascinating bitcoin story it's my favorite dude. question to ask everybody really? oh yeah that one and the only other question i always ask is like when did you start getting into the space uh purchasing bitcoin buying bitcoin hodling um me uh, it was in 2008 man i had a uh, just gotten into a real bad accident um felt really bad because i didn't have much you know 28 years old didn't even know my credit score and uh luckily i met a boss he put me on the finances austrian economics gave me all the works from the ground up and then uh, one day i was looking at all the asset classes didn't make any sense to start with them you need a lot of money to do stocks you need a lot of money to do real estate gold and silver pretty dead in the water right now pretty to look at nice to touch okay cool and one day i was like what's this bitcoin stuff like now that i know this language a little bit more like what is this and uh it made too much sense to me man automatically and it was like all right i'm gonna do this and uh since then i started uh just exploring all Bitcoin. I fell into the shitcoin forest, sadly to say, at the beginning. Um, then that's when I went to Miami, Bitcoin Miami 2021, and uh, met Alex, the guy who we both mutual friend. Uh, yeah. Him and a other, couple other fellow Bitcoiners. Shout out Mr. G, New York City. <laughs> Very based. Um, and yeah, man, they just orange-pilled me all weekend or all week. And uh, I came back home dove all into bitcoin and here i am just i just let go and the rabbit hole just keeps going down opportunities keep coming up i meet amazing men and women all over the state and uh yeah they're like brothers and sisters man it's it's like a fellowship it's amazing so it's just been a great ride ever since and now i'm just now i'm here talking with you yeah yeah dude uh, but th yeah that's kind of one of those things where like you start getting uh you start diving in then you start hanging out with the other people in the scene and then before you know it, you're just uh, you're just in it, right? Pretty wild. Neck deep, I would say balls deep, but can I say that? Yeah, I see why. Yeah, not. neck deep, balls deep, <laughs> however you want to say it. But yeah, yeah, just dove in, man, and now I'm up to my ears in this, and I love it. It's not even, it's not even work stress. It's how Max Kaiser says it. Uh, it's it's all love. Uh, Bitcoin replaces that fear and all that anxiety with love, and uh, that's what brings us together. We all have a like a same like-minded mentality and uh it's cool to see it's, it's amazing actually yeah right yeah something special about how uh all the bitcoiners just kind of get along you know with uh with each other and uh we're always uh you know doing what we want uh and like not really caring about what the establishment or what anybody wants us to to think or or say we just kind of go at the beat of our own drum. Uh, yeah, it's pretty fascinating how we just do that, right? And yeah. We individually kind of work together. It's a beautiful thing to see, man. I see, you know, a bunch of quality people working with quality people just uh, putting out quality products. And um, yeah, it doesn't even look like work, to be honest. But uh, that connection and that same uh, like-minded purpose is there. Everybody's based, you know, so uh, you don't have that many distractions. And that's how y'all are able to build all this out here so far. And y'all are killing it. I, I watch y'all continue to crush it. And uh, yeah, man, y'all's fire just lights mine up and just keeps me going even more. So, nah, man, we're just we're just doing what everybody else is doing. Um, yeah, we're just following. We're just following from our predecessors, pretty much the, who laid the uh, the building blocks before us. And then um, there will be there will be people who will follow after us um but um yeah man it's it's pretty crazy how far we've come in just what since since the summer of last year yeah about yeah right been, yeah a little over six months yeah, yeah dude that's crazy <sighs> wow it's like man. it feels like a so feels like two years ago um what do they call that that uh the effect for technology it doubles every six months it's like that every i mean we're in 
if we're going to have to put a name on it, this is kind of like fintech. And they say tech moves every six, doubles in every six months or 12 months or something like that. The Merkel effect, I want to say that's what it was called. No, I think it's like, what is it, Moore's Law or something like that? There you go, Moore's yeah, yeah. Law. But uh, it's it's one of those things where it's like, uh, it's fascinating how fast Bitcoin moves, right? <sighs> and then our space just moves faster. Man, if you're out for like a week or two, you have a lot of catching up to do. I've done that a couple of <laughs> times and it's like, whoa, what what's going on? Who did what? Yeah. Yeah, you were telling me yesterday, you were catching me up on some news just like from those four days that I was out, just from Saturday. Yeah, man. And then I was I, like, what yeah. happened? What happened? And I was like, damn. Yeah, it's a it's a fast, exciting place, man. It, you know, it's not like stocks and all this other stuff where you have to wait and wait and then people BS and they lie and stall. No, it's like, do you have it right now? All right, well, let's go. Uh, same thing like with the... Uh, Tristan with the escrow stuff and all that. Why wait three to five days? Do you have it? All right, three to five seconds. Boom, here you go. No BS. Yeah, for sure. It, 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 that is weird how we, uh, we, we all kind of uh, don't bullshit around. We all just immediately balls to the wall, <laughs> for lack of a better word. I mean, well, uh, I mean, they, like the bum said, Bitcoin bum. Um, Kyle Murphy. Kyle Murphy. Shout out, <laughs> shout out, Kyle Murphy. Hope you have a safe trip as well. Yeah, I, I talked to him this morning. I think he said he was in um, North Carolina. Oh wow, yeah, cold, cold up there. Yeah, a little bit. He's freezing his balls off. Uh oh. Um, but yeah, no. What what he had said was, uh, you know, Bitcoin brings in the best. Uh, even Jack Dorsey and all them say, you know, once you plug into this network, you have the best working with you behind your back, securing the network, improving the network. And, um, yeah, I mean, how can you argue against something like that, you know? And, um, yeah, it requires the best. So, technically, I'm in a room with the best of the best, and I get to just see y'all sharpen each other. Iron sharpens iron, man. Everyone is their own individual. Everyone's doing their own thing. But the beautiful thing is y'all can come and collaborate. Y'all aren't like sharks and eat each other up. Y'all yeah, that was something you said yesterday I found fascinating. You're hanging out with us at at Plub Lab. Um, and um, it, it was, it's been a quiet week uh, just because uh, a lot of us are under the weather. Um, I was slowly getting back to it. Um, had to record with Marty here just because they're still getting the studio all, all, all ready and stuff like that at, uh, at, uh, at the new place for Unchained. Um, so... Um, you were, you came by uh, to assist with everything, and then um, uh, Ben Ben had some um, some people over to work with some of his stuff. I, I won't dox them, but um, uh, you kind of saw all of that, right? And you you had said something that I thought was pretty fascinating. What did you say? Um, I had read it in um, one of these books, man. I I read a lot, uh, study a lot. I'm I'm really into it. And one of the books was uh, talks about you know, shark-like mentality and uh, orca mentality. It's actually from a Bitcoin vegan. Great guy. He was actually out here. Oh, Justin. Yeah. Shout out Justin. Yeah, dude, Good a, guy. He's a badass motherfucker. <laughs> he's based as fuck, dude. Bro. I actually had a chance to talk to him. He went to ABC and then I met him here um, when I met him with Marty that one time. And dude, that dude's based as fuck. Yeah, man, it was. He could a, spit bars on Bitcoin, bro. Like, it was complete random how, that I met him too, and that meeting him and getting that book from him, I didn't think that would happen ever in my life, and uh, just pushes me to go further down the rabbit hole, you know. And um, in that book, what I was saying earlier is, he talks sharks and orcas. Sharks eat each other up. They run by themselves. There's a lot of business sharks out there. We can all agree on that, you know. Business has been around for ages, you know. He talks about how we have to have a orca mentality and how they run in numbers and numbers are stronger. Orcas, if you look at it, they kill sharks. Orcas are the, how do I say it, uh, apex predator of the sea when they're in packs like that. That's why they're called killer whales, you know? Interesting. So, and they use their minds. They're one of the smartest animals in there besides the dolphin. Dolphins are smart too, right? Um... But yeah, man, so that kind of stuck with me. And I see that here. Like how I said, all y'all have y'all's own thing going on. And like how Keon's doing his own thing, but he can come in here, collaborate with you, and boom. Y'all have a way different product separate from y'all, but it's a piece of you and a piece of him working in uh, 
coagulation together, I guess you could say. Harmonies, you know? Yeah. Uh, one wins, the other one wins. There's no losing. And uh, here, man, energy is crazy. Everybody's just supportive. Um, it's more of a how can I help you mentality. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, at the end of the day, we all just want to, we're all just some plebs, man. We all just want to leave the world a better place than, you know, when we found it, right? Yeah. I think that's what's special about what we do here at Plub Lab. And I, I think that's kind of our secret sauce. And um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if that could be, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if, um, yeah, I don't know how you can kind of replicate that without um without plebs it's hard to put your finger it. on it you yeah know? it's hard to put your finger on it so i told y'all that one time i'm like i can see it but i i can't put my finger on it say you know and we can say that same as bitcoin as being an asset you can you know it's there you know what it is but you can't touch it like everybody says yeah kind of the same i don't know that just popped in my head so that was a little yeah it's kind of the same thing though because like yeah, we we do a lot for each other like everybody in the pub lab does a lot for each other. So it's it's uh it's very much like a brotherhood, a sisterhood. Like it's it's kind of um yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I never man. thought of it like that. It's a beautiful thing, man. It's uh yeah, it is a beautiful thing. Ever since I went out to Miami, uh and I met everybody, man, it was an awesome time. And then I come back to Austin and all this is going on right under my nose. I didn't even know. And um yeah, that's when Alex started coming down, bringing me to more events. And um, yeah, man, just meeting quality people, meeting Bitcoiners from Twitter. I have no idea who they were. Just walking up, <laughs> saying hi, you know, beer in my hand. Real, real professional, right? Yeah. But uh, nah, man, they're all just regular people like like me and you. They all have their own Bitcoin story. It's all it's very beautiful. And then um, a lot of them just took it and ran with it. Now they're doing big things. And it's it's definitely amazing to see how uh, your mind limits you and once you're able to take all these distractions off like depth depth's a real big one bills uh you can focus on your main purpose in life because you have no distractions barring you from reaching that purpose that's true so that that's what i see in a lot of these guys and uh it's it's usually great energy around all these bitcoin meetups because uh yeah that is one distraction a lot of us were kind of able to shake don't get me wrong. Uh, life is, I'm, I'm still, I still, uh, you know, drive the same car I was driving for the last five years. Nothing, I'm not clothes. You know, I don't really buy designer clothes like that or anything. But, uh, but yeah, man, it's, it's, it's nice to know you can snap your fingers and fix a lot of stuff like that. But uh, no sacrifice, no reward, right? So that's what we're doing right now. That's why we continue yeah. to build and sacrifice until we're at a point in time where it's, it's time to step it up a little bit, I guess you could say. Yeah. Gosh, dude, that's so uh, so inspiring. Oh, man. I, yeah. I get it all from watching all y'all, man. Nah, dude, yeah, like, for real. No, nah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it's, uh, it's inspiring to hear that, um, that other people think like that. It's, uh, it's, yeah, dude. I mean, gosh, I don't know what to say. It's, 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 uh, inspiring to hear man and it's crazy because like i meet other bitcoiners i've never met them in my life and as soon as i start talking like this it's like click 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 and then they start talking like that back to me and they're like oh you feel this way too i i thought i was the only one that felt like that and then you meet 10 other people next thing you know y'all are hanging out all night just talking not even bitcoin i mean it'll, it'll come up here and there but yeah we're so like-minded already. It's like, okay, we understand Bitcoin. Like That's the last thing we talk about. Yeah, yeah you get real deep into the philosophy and all that. And it's uh, it's interesting. And uh, yeah. yeah. That's crazy, right? That's usually the last thing we talk about is Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. Every, every once in a while, we'll, we'll bring it up. It'll like, come I think, up. I think yesterday, it was like me, you, and Ben. Uh, we were like talking about other things. And then like late in the night, we were like, uh, I think you had said something. And I was like, Wait, who said that? And then, uh, and then, and then, uh, I think, I think Ben had said, "Oh, somebody, somebody." I was like, "Oh, I thought Ross Steven said it," and you were like, "No." I was like, "Oh, wow, I never heard that before." I think we were talking about the uh, unforgeable costliness. That, yeah, that, yeah, that, that, yeah. <laughs> Big word, great word. Yeah, and I was like, "Man, that's that's based as fuck." And then uh, I think Ben said, "No, it was uh, who did he say it was?" I think he said Nahib, right? Possibly, yeah, Talib. 
Does it tell Talib? You? Yeah, I, yeah. I think I was so. Like, oh fuck! But um, I was like, damn. But it was one of those things where like we had the whole day we're hanging out, but we like ne- we just never really talked about. I mean, we we're all working on Bitcoin, but we just never like had a discussion about Bitcoin until like that late at night moment where we, you had brought up something and we were just like, yeah, just sitting unwinding. We're just unwinding cooling, the cooling day. Down, we're yeah. cooling down the day, and mm-hmm. then. Um, yeah, it said something pretty basic. I was like, whoa, dude, where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, then, I remember your face, man. You were like, like whoa. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Not like that. Yeah. And then uh, Ben turned around. He's like, no, that's a... Uh, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Ben, sh- shout out shout out to the corn the corn man. <laughs> yeah, I love Ben, dude. But yeah, he uh, he cleaned it up for me right then. And uh, yeah, like I said, he just... He knew automatically what I was talking about. So then, yeah. we, then we start going into that rabbit hole. It's... The rabbit hole just keeps going, man. No one's found the bottom yet. I think that's very interesting. That's interesting, right? I, I read that in another book. It was saying, why do we study Bitcoin? Because no one knows what it is. No one can tell you in one sentence what it really is. So that's why we ventured down this rabbit hole to eventually, hopefully, find out what it is. But uh, so far that I've been going down, man, uh, you learn. Pff, learning doesn't stop and uh, just opens up more doors to opportunities. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. So let me switch gears. What uh, what what do you, what do you find like on a daily basis? Like you know, when you go, I don't know, just like your family, your friends, like your normie friends. Like, what what do you find like their reaction these days to Bitcoin? Just trying, oh. I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to get a gauge out there. Oh, I know for me personally, I could tell you, but. No one wants to hear me rant about shit like oh, that. Nah, man. Go for it. I want to hear your. I want to hear you. You rant about. It. Uh, you know, now they're starting to pay attention to it. Um, I still remember back in 2018. That's when I got into it. Beginning, beginning of 18, right after the big crash. Um, I remember my mom sending me like little paper clippings that ATMs, Bitcoin ATMs were coming up, and that was kind of big. And it was still, I think, seven to ten k range. Um. Uh, I would just try and tell people about it. All my friends and family, no one wanted to listen. And yeah, once number go up hit, number go up technology came into play. You know, everybody loves to see the number go up. Uh, now it's like, oh, did you see the price today? What's going on? And uh, I mean, I was there at one point too in the beginning. But um, after so 10,000 hours plus of studying, you know, that's what they say you need to put in to at least understand and grasp the concept of this. Um, now I just stack sats and chill, man. Once you understand that in itself, uh, it makes DCAing a lot easier. I don't even look at DCAing. I just stack sats. And uh, it's a beautiful time right now to stack them. So <laughs> yeah, hope everybody's out there stacking sats. Yeah, it was RHR yesterday. Marty had showed a, 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 a graph. Or no, it wasn't a graph. It was like the, you know, that little odometer that shows... Uh, the greed, the greed and, and fear index. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it had he had said Marty had done a a, a bent on. Uh, he had said something like it was at like, like the greed index was a hundred percent last year when Bitcoin was at like was it thirty something or something like that, and and then it was something. It was like close to where it was now, mm-hmm. and then complete opposite. And it was the complete opposite today at the same price. And like, yeah, it was kind of like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, man. When you start getting into this uh, space, a, a lot of things don't make sense. Uh, you start seeing kind of the world, what it is, you know, uh, that veil is lifted off your eyes. It's kind of like the Matrix. I didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> like, okay, you've seen the new one, right? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Oh, yeah, me too. Train wreck. I tried falling asleep and it didn't end. And I tried falling asleep again and it still didn't end. I gave it a chance, man. I was a big fan of the old ones. Grew up with that big movie guy. But um, anyways, getting off subject. Uh, there's one part in the movie where they start seeing code everywhere in everyday life. And uh, I tell them, I have a twin sister and I told her, I go, that's kind of how like you see things once you get orange pilled. It's not a, bl- a red or a blue pill. It's an orange pill. I want the truth. I don't care if it's right or left. And once you see it, you can't unsee it, man. It's it's amazing. That's so true, dude. <sighs> yeah, it's it's a. Uh, you see orange coat everywhere. Oh man, I just see little orange pills everywhere. Little just right. you know, just popping up. Or if I see like a random bee somewhere, random orange color somewhere, I'm like, oh, look, Bitcoin. Nah, but I was like that in the beginning. But um, yeah, man, like now it's just life. It's a it's a it's a part of life. It's a way of life. Pleb life. I mean, I don't know how to say it. 
Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't understand, but that's what's so unique about Bitcoin meetups and uh, Pleb Lab, everything. I come here and everybody sees it. And then you know you're not alone. And that allows you to collaborate and build because there's no obstruction. Rather than if I was talking to one of my normie friends, he wouldn't get anything I'm saying because uh, a lot of people are based in Keynesian economics, which is what we operate in right now. Fake money, fake product, cheap product. And uh, yeah, man, it's uh, interesting. Bitcoin just takes us back to basics. You know how my parents back in the day would say, just save up and then go buy something. Well, economics are a little crazy right now and that ain't working. <laughs> but um, but the, the cool thing is with Bitcoin is like, no, just save your set, stack your sets and chill. That's another version of it. Just save up. Right. It'll, it'll, it goes back to principles. And uh, yeah, man, it's just eerie to see. It's really cool. Really just playing my part, man, playing by the rules. And uh, well, there ain't no rules in Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fascinating. Like, I think uh, like 2021 for me was a lot of just like going back to my roots, like getting back to what 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 the what the roots of of everything for okay. me what for me was um you know just uh getting back to christianity um uh, getting back to like you know eating tacos <laughs> just being a taco pleb mm -hmm, taco pleb. i got me some tacos this morning <laughs> by the way i was gonna bring some but no no you're good we got we got here a little too late yeah uh like and then just getting back to to the roots of everything like like family yeah. Um, friends, um, get, finding a job, finding, uh, building out for your community, uh, localism, um, um, you know, really caring about the people around you mm -hmm. and really caring about your, your, uh, your community and, and what you can do for it. And, um, and to me that making sure that those things are the most important thing that you put above everything else, um, your family, your community, and, and your God. And like, and I think uh, for me, like getting back to those roots were like so important for me in 2021. And, um, and uh, I know like having that as a base now going forward in 2022, it's so much easier for me at least to build with that base as a foundation. Um, because I feel like now I can add the you know the what would you call that like the the beams around that foundation okay. yeah because there's a there's an actual base there's an actual foundation that's solidified now you, you're not you're not a man building his empire on sand exactly. as a lot as a lot of them out there are yeah exactly and and i think um before 2021 i couldn't say that so. so I was uh, before I uh, took my whole journey, man, I was building on sand, building on sand, falling down a hole. And um, yeah, once I, to be honest, once I switched my mindset and unit of account from cents mm -hmm. to sats, uh, game changer. You're able to break out of the system. You're able to do things you always would tell yourself, oh, I can never do that. You know, now, now you're here doing this. Look at you. Mm -hmm. Look what you're doing now. Um how you just told me you're doing it for the community, for the people you love, you know, for God. It's a beautiful thing. Um, that means you're not being selfish. You're being selfless. That's why right. you're seeing everything build around you because you bring everybody up with you. Exactly. So uh, that's, that's what I see here, man. Everybody here is a, a lot of, a uh, lot of selfless people here, uh, hardworking individuals. Um, yeah. So that, that's what yeah. I got from you telling me that. Yeah, you just, another thing too, and this I learned from Marty is just um, you just got to be patient, um, and uh, that's something I didn't know before I met Marty. Like I, I honestly would. This is me being honest and truthful. It's like I used to always like try to even ask Kyle. He'll tell you that he'll be the first one to say this is totally car. It's like I'd always try to push the gas pedal on everything, just because it's not that I was impatient. It was more like me just that was the only speed I knew. Okay. It was just like car go fast. Like, <laughs> and it was because car goes fast. Like it, it, th there's like, I'm not trying to be like a pun or anything. It's just like car just goes fast. That's just how car goes. I like that pun. That was actually a really good one. 
it's just always I been like that it. way since I was a kid. Okay. Yeah. And so like, um, but until I met Marty and like started working with him and started seeing how he does things, that's when I realized, oh no, like it's better to be patient about things and it's better to be, um, you know, um, just take your, take your time and do things the right way and do things. Um, uh, I, I would say I, I always put effort and I always put uh, time into things. That was never an issue with me. It was just like being patient. And then once I learned that, that's when I started noticing like, okay, now I'm being patient now. And I noticed that things still come at the same speed. You really don't have to push the gas pedal. Um, um, you, you really can go um, at, at a normal speed. You could still work around the clock if you want to. Um, you can just go um, at a normal speed, if that makes sense. And how you and uh, Kyle have told me y'all aren't on a fiat clock. You're on a what? Oh, that's a secret. No, <laughs> just oh, kidding. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you're on a you're on a, you know a Bitcoin clock, man. There, it's different rules you're playing by. How you're saying you feel like you have to go, 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 go. All right, well, that was the old system telling us. Yeah, like uh, yeah. So like you know, I, I guess I'll tell everybody. You just gave it away. Uh-oh. You gave away our secrets. Uh-oh. No, I'm just kidding. This isn't a secret. It kind of is. It kind of isn't, but if you know, you know. I guess if you know, you know. I mean, this will probably, honestly, I probably, I think most people in the industry operate like this, and most people in the industry don't operate like this. I would say it's probably like fifty fifty. Okay. Just, just from okay. the people that I talk to, uh, I could be wrong because we haven't. Me and Kyle are still young, right? So we haven't been in the industry that long. So I would say it's probably like the people that I talk to, um, about 50-50 so far that I've talked to operate like this. So I could be wrong. It could just be me being young, and a young Bitcoiner and not knowing anything better. So excuse me if I come off like that. But um, it, it I've noticed like if, if you operate in, in, a, in a Bitcoin time clock, which is 24-7, and you work like that, um, you you get more stuff accomplished, but if you operate in a fiat time clock, um, then it you just uh, you're stuck in the eight to five loop. Get out, go to the gym, go home, eat, go to bed, and you got to wake up the next day and do it all over again. Yeah, because the the and I I told Remy this is like um like uh, you're we're Bitcoiners like there's no reason why we can't reinvent everything, and so I I just I just don't personally I, I don't understand why. So many, um, and this could be me being naive, and excuse me if I come off naive as a young Bitcoiner because I'm just still learning, so excuse me. But um, personally, I just want to, like, reinvent everything from scratch. And you're doing it. No, I don't think so. I I just, I want to just reinvent it. Um, And I don't don't, want to reinvent it just to reinvent. I want to reinvent it because I think it could be done better personally. Of course, of course. And uh, um, I think like the old way of doing it was cool. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do it different because we're Bitcoiners. Um, and I think that's just because like there's like there's certain things like we uh, that we do at Pleb Lab that's a little bit different than other people. And I think it's because um, we're just trying to reinvent it. Not not because we think it uh, it needs to be reinvented because we just think the old way of doing it is just lame well i mean uh also too i you know i've told some friends it's like uh how you're saying um it's like using the dollar our whole life we're told this is money this is the only money you use now you have this new thing this new form of money this hard money and the government's still telling you don't use it but everybody uh, well at least we can see it it's like no you can use this alternative too like so that's kind of how I see it, how you're saying it. Like you're, it's something, it's just a new field. It's so raw. Like, yeah. And I feel like there's a, like, it, like it's the same thing. It was for every industry. Like when um, Netflix came out, they didn't try to copy like VHS or like the DVD player or the DVD. <laughs> like they just reinvented streaming, right? Yeah, yeah. They just reinvented it. Or like you even look at something like Apple, right? Like Apple didn't 
come out when they with the personal computer. They didn't try to copy like you know IBM. They just reinvented the personal computer. Like yeah. and that goes with every industry. Like even, Amazon. Even when they came out with um, the like um, um, movie theaters, right? Like they didn't. They weren't trying to copy like silent films. They were like they went and did movie theaters completely different than silent films. So it's like it goes back to everything. Like. I, th- I think people don't see personally. This is me. I'm sorry. Again, I'm, it could just be me being naive, young Bitcoiner. But I personally think like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to reinvent everything all over again in the Bitcoin industry. And a lot of us are taking the easy way out and just copying everything that's come before us when it's like, no, dude, reinvent it all. Like I was telling Remy, I was like, dude, we're going to reinvent the newspaper. That's what I want to do. Wow. Fuck that. Like, that's what I want to do with Thriller Bitcoin. I mean, it's a bold statement, but... It's definitely achievable. I think it's achievable for the local newspaper and, and um, Thriller Bitcoin. It's Why a, not? Yeah, it's definitely within the realm of possibilities. Why rule it out? Why rule it out? But, mm-hmm. like, that's the goal. We're either going to succeed or not, but I'm going to die trying. I was going to say, at least you tried, right? If, it, if not, if nothing... So. Yeah, but like that's why I told Remy, I was like, "So, dude, you you do whatever you want. Like, let's just try to do that." Because it's uh, to me, I just don't see the point of doing something when we don't try that. Do you know what I mean? Like, what's the point? I get that. I get that. Like, what's the point of of like just doing not being like, original? Well, yeah, that too. But it's like, but what's the point of even creating something if you're not gonna if you're not gonna go for it? Kind of like a balls to the wall mentality. Cargo fast. No, no, I mean, it, no. It's not even that. It's just like. Uh, no, I mean not that, but I mean like, uh, yeah. Why not just shoot for the stars? Yeah. I uh, I always think back to like a. It's like a Kanye West lyric back in the day, when he was Kanye, not Ye. Oh, but, okay. And one of the songs he says, uh, uh, what does he say? Shoot for the stars. So if you if you fall, you land on a cloud. Like j- just oh, to really? aim high, yeah. And I don't know why that's kind of stuck with me like that. So. I like how yeah. you said that. You want to shoot for the stars. I love it. Yeah. And then along the way, you know, if it uh, if it turns out to be something different, but um, I, that's how I kind of see it now. This is like, let's just turn through Bitcoin into like a local newspaper, local Austin newspaper. And then eventually if it, if it turns into that, cool. If it doesn't, then it'll turn into something else completely. And, um, and that, that's what we started with Austin Bitcoin club. We just turn it into like a social club and then it, Turn into something completely different. Oh yeah, man! I I wish I was here for the first for the Genesis meeting, man. I wanted to see the sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> they were terrible. Oh man. no! <laughs> yeah, that sounds cool they though. Were terrible, <laughs> dude. That was all we could afford, man. Yeah, hard I, times, bro. I mean, and then yeah, I show up one day and it's like, oh, chicken and beer. It's like, yeah. what? This is yeah. cool. Okay, I think we're gonna get tacos next time. Oh yeah, I remember you and Keon. Yeah, hey, that was hilarious. The the rib reference. Like you can't eat chicken in a civil setting. <laughs> Yeah. Just like ribs. I was like, oh. Yeah, that's hilarious, dude. It was a good comparison, though. And, like, I'll be talking sometimes, eating some chicken, and it's like, I take a bite, and it's like, hold on, let me put it down real quick. Let me wipe wipe the crumbs off, and then I got to get the grease off. All right, let me shake your hand. Oh, that's fun. But, um, I mean, it's not that big a deal for me. I just, I'll eat before the, yeah. you know, before, and then I'll just chill the rest of the night. Yeah. Talk Bitcoin. Speaking of uh, clubs and meetups and all that stuff, there's a rumor going around, bro. Oh heard, yeah, what's I up? Heard, uh, I heard you're starting a San Antonio Bitcoin Club. What's up with that? Is it, is it true? Some some things are in the works right now. What? Yes, sir. There's gonna be a SABC. SABC. You said oh, it. Oh snap, bro! <laughs> oh yeah, pretty excited. Shut up, really? Very excited, man. Uh, is get, it true? You really are gonna do it? Yes, sir. Damn yes, sir. Bro. This is the first time. Uh, just putting it out there right now. So. Damn, bro. Yeah, I've been working behind the scenes. Uh, last couple months, just putting everything together. And uh, now it's just ironing out the details. I actually want to hopefully get it started um, whenever this cold weather goes away. So maybe like March, I'm, I'm assuming right after Somewhere February. Springish. Yeah, I mean, right now, you know, everybody's getting sick and flu's going around. Yeah. And like, it's like, I'll, I'll just wait till it warms up a little bit. And it, it's Texas weather, so it might not be that long, you know. Um, but yeah, man, I just want to do that. Probably like if I'm after shoot, Probably March. March will be the beginning date. Um, like I said, right now, me and the team, we're looking uh, at venues. 
And uh, yeah, I just want to bring quality to the city, bring quality people out and uh, build quality things. You know, we're only an hour south of Austin. You already, Austin's already in great hands with you and Kyle, everybody else, Ben, the whole team down here. And uh, me being around all that greatness, I just want to uh, extend those those good hands to uh, the sister city, the city I was born in, and uh, not let a bunch of shit coiners, you know, <laughs> put their hands all in my city. Fuck yeah. How I started all this, I started helping my, like you, uh, uh, being selfless. I tell my mom, my sister, my stepdad, uh, at first it was all about me. I wanted to crawl out this hole and then you start finding out it's bigger than you. And uh, when you become selfless, you know, you're able to accomplish these good things, you know, these big things bigger than you. You you would have never imagined you could do that. So now that I'm helping my family and, and uh, got all them orange pilled and opening their eyes to the uh, economics going on right now, the economy, everything. Uh, that's all I want to do for my city, man. I just want everybody to rise together. Um, you know, I look at it. Austin has built a lot within the last 10 years. Uh, Dallas always been big. Houston, it's a port city, always big. It's like San Antonio. The last thing I had that we got built was uh, a bank parking lots to go to the banks. Yeah. It could it could actually teach the community like like and it could actually help regular people get hands on Bitcoin, dude. And like you can actually save a lot of people from from not not making it. Like you can actually save lives. And that's what that's how fundamentally Bitcoin can save the world, dude. Yeah, Bitcoin fixes a lot of things, dude, like they say, right? Yeah, dude, and like that's just more Bitcoin in the hands of of regular people where it should be, and not in the hands of institutions. I love it because like it doesn't deserve to be in the hands of institutions; it deserves to be in the hands of the of the working class, the hardworking people. And that that's another thing too. I uh, I look at my the San Antonio, my city, and I'm like, if there's gonna be any city that's gonna work hard and catch up, it's gonna be San Antonio. And uh, I believe our people can do that down there. Um, we just have to bring the talent together. And that's that's probably the only problem I see down there is we don't have these Bitcoin meetups to bring quality with quality, you know? And um, so, yeah, that's the goal, man. Just uh, build everybody up and uh, everybody wins. No scamming, no cutthroat stuff. We're all our, so- our own sovereign individuals, right? We all just, uh, we get it. We're all our own men and women. Um, Gee, I, I believe you can do it, man, and we'll help you every step of the way, man. So, when you, um, whenever you need help, me and Kyle are right there, and then whenever you need devs to go over there, and we have the devs. So, like, I'm, I'm sure somebody will step up and assist. Yeah, man, it, it's already sounding like a beautiful thing, and um, you know, it, it won't just be San Antonio and Austin. Like, I hope to attract. Seguin, Floresville, Bernie, New Braunfels, San Marcos. Oh, yeah. Dude. Any of y'all are hearing this, you know, come on down. Keep your eye out on uh, the Meetup app, actually. Uh, I haven't posted anything yet, but uh, it's coming. So uh, looking forward to just getting greatness together and uh, seeing what we can accomplish together. Yeah. So. It's going to be it's gonna be a big thing, dude. I really do. I really do believe it. Yeah, you pretty much hit it on the head, you know. Um, all I can say is... It's not about me. It's about we. It's about us. Um, I'll tell my friends, I go, I'm still, I say, I'm still broke. And they'll start laughing. And it's like, I'm like, I'm broke. I'm not poor. I'm just broke. Like, I just don't got money right now. I don't want to spend any. Like, we're good. Um, but, you know, we're just all regular people. And it's uh, what I want everybody to see. Like, whenever I met uh, Jack Maulers down here, that one was crazy. Just a regular guy. Regular. I, I wanted to say kid, but that's a man, right? That that man is changing the world. A uh, regular guy, man. Uh, Stefan Lavara, regular guy. Met him here too. Like, just individuals who made moves for themselves and now look what they're doing, you know? Like, changing the world. Opening other people's eyes. Like, it's not about them. It's about everyone else. And see how yeah. fast they're rising. I mean, they're all young. Everybody's young in this space. Majority, majority. Yeah, dude. Um, I mean, we are young. Yeah. Everybody, everybody. Yeah, are, they're, we're just regular people. I don't think people realize that. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's cool to see the humanity behind all this. You know, it's a tech world. 
Uh, I would think, you know, I, I thought personally before coming in, like, uh, texts were, like, cold and they didn't really know, like, emotion, awkward. You know, I thought they were going to be, like, just out there. And then you meet them and it's like, nah, they're some of the coolest people you can hang out with. And they're so laid back and so based and y'all can literally talk anything. Like, no one's left, no one's right, you know, no one's wrong, no one's right. And, uh, you know, if you're wrong, you're going to get corrected. And that's the beautiful thing about this. Uh, we can all take correction. It's uh, iron sharpening iron. And you, I'll come out of the pleb lab right here if I'm wrong. And now that I got the right information, I can go spread that good information and give that quality type of stuff. Yeah. To other people that, you know, to people that might not be looking for that or might not necessarily know that that information exists. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, w I would even say, like, you even don't even trust us. Like, you know, go out and um, verify. Own, verify. Verify. Don't trust, verify. So we could even be wrong. Some of the so, three so. biggest words right there. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Man, what a great conversation. Yeah, man, got deep real quick right there. Yeah, Philosophy, man. and then we were touching yeah, everything, dude. man. I feel like we got a, I feel like we got a lot of stuff going up, going on. Um, it's awesome. I, I was a little nervous actually before this. Really? Just a little bit, man. Why? I don't know. I, I was uh talking to one of my friends and I was telling him I'm a little nervous and he was like, Why? You talk this all the time. Like this is all you do. <laughs> and I'm like, Yeah, I don't know why, man. I, I don't know why. But um I just um yeah, man. I did what I uh have been doing since I got in the space, just show up and don't be a dick. To show up and don't be a dick. It's what I've yeah. heard by so many people. And, yeah, uh, pretty much. It's, yeah, it worked out, man. It's been amazing. It's been a great ride so far and just continuing it in uh, 2022. I feel like this year is going to be a really good year, actually. Yeah. So far, 2022 has been kind of rocky because of the flu uh -oh. for me. But uh, once, uh, once I get, once, uh, well, I already got past the flu, but like, um, We'll see what happens, bro. I mean, y'all were killing it last year at the end of the year already. I'm, ho I'm with, hopeful. With the Bitcoin block part and everything, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all. And then the New Year, tch, come on, man. Y'all were putting, y'all pumping out product at the end of last year. It was beautiful. Yeah. So uh, it's understandable right now to be like, oh, you know, it's a little slow. Yeah. But I know y'all are going to get he, back on he, it. Kyle back. Turns out he's a, uh, he's a lightning bolt of energy. Oh turns man, out. that guy's vibration is like turns out way dude. up here. Yeah, it turns out. Turns out. Turns out he's my lifeblood. Weird. You're my <laughs> you're the, the Scotty to your Jordan, or vice versa. No, he's I'm definitely Scotty. He's he's definitely Jordan. Okay. No mistake. There you go. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, dude, it's weird. Um Yeah, for sure. Need him back. What was I gonna say? Uh, but yeah, dude, great, great talk. You got anything else? Where can uh, people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, actually. Do you have a weird, do you have like a number or is it just like a, a number? Nah, a number nah. as your thing? Nah, thank God, no. Uh, it's is actually. It, is it just G? It's, well. It's, I know I follow you. It's at money, the number two, the letter B, murdered by. Money to be murdered by. Damn it. Yeah, a little, little savage, but. uh. There you go. Bucket. When I got into this, I didn't know Twitter was such a big deal. I went down to Miami and everybody was like, what's your Twitter handle? What's your Twitter? It was like the new business card. And uh, well, Alex was the one that was like, you got to get on Bitcoin Twitter. Like, we're going to get you. I'm going to get you a profile. So he he set me up, man. And um, now I've just been running with that, that profile. And it's been <laughs> Twitter, Bitcoin, man. Bitcoin Twitter. It is probably the funniest yeah, dude. Most active community I've seen on on Twitter. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I waste so much time. Dude, I meet so many people. Um, like Phil out here. Oh yeah, Phil. Phil Sue, uh, crazy smart guy can talk for hours. I'm like, bro, what books do you like? What do you read? And he's like, just looks at me. Oh, I don't read. I I just get on Bitcoin Twitter. I was uh, I've heard that from a lot of people, and I'm just like blown away with. The stuff that a lot of people know just based off of Twitter and YouTube, of course, you know. Uh, yeah, man, it's changed. Both those two platforms right there are changing the game as far as education. It's no longer uh, you got to pay for that type of stuff. You know, they say the best information is free, right? So that, that's what we're experiencing is digital age. Yeah, dude, there's so much good stuff on Twitter, but, uh, especially on Bitcoin Twitter. Uh, yeah. 
It's good stuff. But yeah, if there's anybody in uh, San Antonio, don't be afraid to reach out to me. Um, yeah, I, I'll put all your links in the show notes for sure. I appreciate it. I uh, I frequent the city still. I still go back, hang out with my parents southeast side. Um, grab some tacos, you know, grab some Mexican <laughs> food, hang out a little bit, enjoy nice. the warm weather. Yeah. Where, where's the best, uh, where's the best taco place in, uh, oh, man. for you, for you, man, not, you, not like the best in San Antonio, just where's your favorite oh, taco place? Man, there's a lot, man. The okay. Little, where, where, if I want to get some pastor tacos, mm, where am I going? It's definitely going to be probably a food truck. I'll definitely throw you a food truck probably somewhere or a little Mexican restaurant. I don't even know the name of, but I'll know where it's at in the city. Okay. If I want barbacoa tacos, like on a Sunday. <laughs> I mean, we got the meat markets and those are, those are always, th- those are fire out there. Yeah. Oh, damn, dude. We, don't, we, we have meat markets here, but they're not. I've seen them. They're a little different. Just a little bit. <sighs> yeah, but they're not as good. I go to one place down here. Which one? Uh, it's off of Ditmar. Ditmar. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right there. Yeah. Bro, I know what you're talking about. That get... little, uh, it's, in that, that, it's in that convenience store. Yes, sir. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Oh yeah, they don't man. make homemade tortillas though. Oh no, you just ruined my my whole. You just broke my whole reality on that. My if perception. You want good bar- oh. If you want good barbacoa tacos, uh, me madres, it's pretty good. Okay, yeah, I I actually think somebody told me about that one recently. And if you I was want like, good pastor, uh, al pastor on Riverside. Okay, okay. Yeah, if there's that's what I'm saying here in uh, in town. Like, if you're gonna get Mexican tacos, you gotta go to. A different place for each one. It's not like San Antonio where you can go to any. Yeah, it's kind of they're kind of everywhere. And out, out here, like I get that. If you want carne guisada tacos, mm-hmm. it kind of depends. Like what kind of carne guisada tacos you want. Like, Ooh, yeah. Do you want a carne guisada plate? Or <laughs> do you want a carne guisada taco? Like, uh, like what uh, weddle style, or do you want it like Mexican style? Like it kind of depends. It's funny you say that because like I'm real critical on my carne guisada. That's what I'm trying to yeah. say. Like if I want it like weddle style, then I'll go to like Mi Madres. But if I want it like Mexican style, then I'll probably go to like um, what's that place called right there? It's a it's a it's a Mexican barbecue shop. Is it the one? Um, it's over there off of uh, Manchaca. Is it Man- uh, Valentino's? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you had them? Oh, I have. I, I was eating them before I moved out here. I would come down here and dude, they have homemade flour yeah. tortillas too. The line gets so crazy sometimes. Yeah, Just a dude. heads up, anybody going out there, get there early. That dude don't fuck around. Oh man, it's it's an experience. Uh, just adds to the just adds to the whole uh, atmosphere. Standing in line for your tacos. He even makes like a fideo like taco. Have you ever had that one? I don't know no. if it's still on there anymore, but. He had like a fideo taco, and I was like, man, I'm not a fan of fideo. Uh-huh. The way he made this kind of taco creation, I was like, oh shit, Jeez. this is like a hangover uh, Sunday morning, making eating mom's leftover fideo, and then he made it like into a taco wow. Sunday morning. I was like, whoa, shit, this is good. I uh, I've never had fideo the next day. It's usually the one I found out that was like random was menudo. Have you ever had that in a taco? No, uh, like. For a hangover cure, like the next day, if you're no. not menudo, that juice for some reason, like interesting, makes your head feel better. Some it's it calms you down. I'm not really a big fan of menudo, but like yeah, me either. But the, yeah, like one I of my friends told me. For, and, I usually uh, just pop open a beer and that fuck, fix it. Yeah, that could work too. Or michelada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works too for sure. <laughs> oh man, dude, that's funny. All right, bro, let's uh, let's end this. Okay, yeah. cool. You got anything else? That's it, man. I, I can't think of anything. Thank you for your time. I uh, always tell you and the guys here, I appreciate everything y'all do for me, everything y'all do for the community. De nada, bro. Ah, oh, gee, that. damn it, boy. And uh, yeah, man, it's just, um, let's just keep this thing going. Hell yeah. 2022 is going to be the year. I can feel it.